Perez as well. Oh, that is superb. This season is becoming a real breakthrough for Julian Alvarez. The Manchester City and Argentina striker is now turning into a key player for his club, which will certainly benefit the national team. In this video, the Vamosito channel will tell you how Julian forced Pep Guardiola to put him in his starting lineup. So click on the subscribe button and let's get started. Julian Alvarez's career is developing quite interestingly. For instance, last season he won the World Cup with Argentina and was one of the most important players for the team there. At the same time, the striker was only a rotation player at Manchester City, which ended the season with a treble. Of course, Julian would have liked more as a world champion, but what can you do when you are a striker and join the team together with Erling Haaland? You can no longer expect a permanent place in the center of the attack. However, Alvarez was rescued by the fact that he is a versatile player who can play not only as a center forward but also as a secondary striker or on either wing. At the beginning of his career, Julian gained experience playing in all positions in the attack and this gave him a chance at Manchester City even despite Haaland's arrival. However, Alvarez spent his last season at River Plate before moving to Manchester exclusively as a centre-forward, and in most matches he was the only centre-forward. In that 2021-22 campaign, he played in 26 games, scoring 18 goals and making 6 assists. So when Julian arrived at Man City in the summer of 2022, it became obvious that he would have to recall how to play on the wings or as a secondary striker. This took time, as did getting used to Pep Guardiola's demands and style of play. Given that this was Manchester City, one thing was clear. Whatever position Julian applied for, he had to face intense competition. Among his rivals were not only Erling Haaland, but also Jack Grealish, Phil Foden, Bernardo Silva and Riyad Mahrez. Despite scoring four goals and providing one assist at the World Cup, which Argentina won, Julian played a minor role for his city. At the same time, Alvarez's season cannot be described as poor. Let's see, he made 49 appearances for the citizens, scoring 17 goals and providing five assists. These are not bad numbers at all, but he played mostly in cup competitions or as a substitute. In the majority of the most important matches, Guardiola favored other players. If we evaluate the first season in England, overall it was quite successful for Julian in terms of trophies. After all, he's the only player who won both the World Cup and the Champions League last season. For this, Alvarez was even nominated for the Ballon d'Or. And he also satisfied Pep with his performances. With Julian, every time he plays, he gives us everything. To play almost all of the games to be world champions with Argentina where there are thousands of talented footballers and to be able to play there is because he has something. Friends, please like this video if you have the same faith in Alvarez's success as Pep Guardiola. But the new 2023-24 season was the time for Julian to start developing into an undisputed starter for Man City. To do this, he had to change his style of play a bit and adapt to the new realities. In the end, he knew that he would not be able to push Erling Haaland out of the starting 11. Kevin De Bruyne's injury in the first match of the season helped Alvarez to get more playing time. The Belgian went out for a long period and Guardiola had to look for a solution. Obviously, such a player cannot be replaced directly, so it was necessary to get out of the situation differently. And Julian became that solution. More precisely, he made this decision as simple as possible for Pep. Guardiola slightly changed the roles of the players in the attack. Last season, City started most of their matches in a nominal 4-3-3 formation. It looked like this. But during the game, this particular positioning of players could only be seen in positional defense. That is, as you can imagine, a very small percentage of the time. When in possession, citizens switched to a 3-2-4-1 formation. And after losing the ball, the team tried to press high in a formation that resembled a 4-4-2. As you can see, in all these rearrangements, Kevin De Bruyne's position changed most often. The Belgian played either as the number 8 or as the number 10, or as the second striker next to Holland. 
Of course, Alvarez is not a player of the same profile to fully replace De Bruyne. Therefore, Pep Guardiola introduced the Argentinian into the lineup instead of Kevin, but switched to a more classic 4-2-3-1 formation. In this formation, Alvarez plays the role of a secondary striker or number 10. Call it what you will, there is no big difference. And in high pressure, the system can easily be switched to a 4-4-2 with Julian as a second striker. Interestingly, at the start of the season, Guardiola rarely uses the tactic of shifting one of the defenders to the center of midfield in possession. This is not because Pep has abandoned this tactical maneuver, but because of John Stones' injury at the start of the season. The Englishman is the only defender in the team who can perform this role at an elite level. But all these factors have led to the fact that now Manchester City's formation does not change quite often during the match and looks like a normal 4-2-3-1 with Alvarez as a free forward. And it was this role that revealed the Argentinian to the fullest. His technique, positioning, walk rate, shooting and game intelligence have allowed him to flourish for City. Currently, Julian has 6 goals and 5 assists in 13 matches, which is almost 1 goal contribution per match. We knew Alvarez could score goals before, but his creativity has exploded this season. Take a look at these stats from Sky Sports. It's a comparison of Julian's creativity in various metrics between this season and last for 90 minutes. Crazy progress! The Argentinian has started to create two, three times more threats to the opponent's goal compared to last season. Bravo! He's learning a lot how to move in the pockets. He's a threat with goals and assists, and a work ethic. We're delighted that the club brought him last year. Gundo left, and unfortunately, with the injury to Kevin, he has his chance and he's using it. Now he's almost unstoppable. Guardiola praised Julian. You have to admit that not everyone gets to hear from Pep that you are almost unstoppable. Alvarez has become such a player. It is especially worth paying attention to the cooperation of the newly formed pair of strikers, Haaland and Alvarez. These two have taken mutual understanding to a new level. They have learned each other's maneuvers perfectly, which has resulted in 10 chances created for each other in the Premier League so far. The second most by a duo behind only Aston Villa's Oli Watkins and Moussa Diaby. With the departure of Gundogan and Mahrez and the Brenner's injury, Julian has proven to be an excellent free-kick taker. Last season, he never took a free-kick, and this season he has already scored goals with direct shots against Wolves and Red Star. He also hit the post in a match against West Ham. Alvarez's progress is also great news for the Argentinian national team. The Albi Celeste, as much as they may not want to, have to think about the future without Leo Messi. The existence of players such as Julian, Alexis McAllister and Enzo Fernandez gives fans hope that the process of replacing Leo will not be so painful. Gradually, Alvarez and Lautaro Martinez should take the lead in the team's attack. And given the results of these strikers for their clubs, the national team will continue to be a contender for winning all the tournaments in which they compete. Friends, write in the comments what the future holds for Julian Alvarez at the club and in the national team and whether he can become the leader of his teams. We also invite you to watch other videos from our channel among the suggested ones. Bye!